encouraged, but be encouraged because God is going to constantly help you. He is constantly going to work. Oh, Lord. I, <laughs> wow. I hadn't thought about that. The last video I did, I was talking about how you got to maintenance your walk. So you got to make sure you keep your oil changed so you keep that fresh anointing. Yes. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke, not your smarts. So when you look at how God is so patiently working on us, fixing us, readjusting us, giving us our tune-ups, giving us all kind of help and healing, picture the, 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 uh, the neighborhood would-be mechanic that just loves working on his car. Picture that. And he's in the driveway, and every time you pull up, he's got the hood up, and he's bent over, reaching in there, fixing the wiring, making adjustments, doing this, that, and the other. And you're like, your car's running. What are you fixing now? Well, because this man loves the car so much, He's always tweaking it. He tweaks it here and he tweaks it there and he tweaks it and gets the screwdriver and he gets the wrench and the, 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 the oh my goodness. He, he gets the little wire thing and he, he's twisting and he's soldering and he's moving and he's pulling and he's changing and he's adjusting and all oh, the fan belt, all oh, the serpentine thing needs to be done. All oh, this one, the carburetor let me work on that let me throw a few extra replace a few spark plugs and constantly finding something to do under that hood and you would think boy if he gave his wife that much attention whoo -hoo, they'd be on a constant honeymoon but he's just so into this car he's not angry with the car He's not going to kick the car to the curb. Battery dies. He's not going to sell the car. He's going to replace the battery. Why? Now, this car may be 30 years old, and he's kept it running all these years because he cherishes it. That's a car. That's a sinful man. Imagine a loving, an eternally loving God working on you, working on me. Picture him that way. Eager beaver to tweak this and tweak that. Not annoying. Eager. Let him come in. Let him come in your dark, secret closets. Let him come into your, your dirty, filthy, uh, uh, mildewed basement. Let him open that chest of, of hidden dark secrets. Let him open the suitcase full of your shame. You keep comparing God's love to man. God's love doesn't even feel like any kind of love you've ever felt on this earth. This earth has not the love that God has. You have to experience God and his love. God's love is galactic. It's supernatural. It's, it's, out, of, it's out of this world. It's totally different. It's as if somebody handed you a whole new type of water from another galaxy and you're looking at it and it looks kind of different and it smells different and when you drink it it does stuff in your body and it's really weird but it's not like the water that you've tasted on this earth well that's the way God's love is God's love is like nothing you've ever felt before but once you experience it you know Nobody has to explain that. It's an instant revelation. It's a knowing. You know that you know that you know. 
Now, if you can picture that kind of love, even though you have an experience, if you try to imagine it just a little bit, and you compare that to this man that's working under his hood, fixing his car, and fixing his car, and tweaking this, and realigning that, and repositioning, he doesn't have to work on it. He could drive it. But he wants that puppy to, he wants it to hum like a hummingbird. He wants that puppy to ride like it's floating on a cloud. Mm -hmm. How do they call it? Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He wants that car to run like a well-oiled machine. Well, God wants you to run like a well-oiled machine. But you have got to let him in to the most painful, shameful, frustrating, disappointing, blackest, darkest, dreariest parts of your life. You've got to allow him in there. Now, if my house ain't right, ain't nobody coming across my door. Ain't nobody coming in my house. It's just not happening. I'm not one of those people that can let people in my house when it's messy. It's pride, but it ain't happening. But I tell you what, I don't have anything that God can't come into. I don't care how ashamed I am. I don't care how disappointed I am in myself. I know God loves me. And I know that even if I am sick of me, God is not. Because God's like that mechanic. He just wants to tweak this and tweak that. And, oh boy, oh, it sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, now let's see what else. What else did I want to work on? I mean, just constantly looking for something else to work on. Because that's the way his love works. God loves us way more than that man who cherishes his car. That, that car to that man is his trophy. And he's going to keep it spotless. He's going to keep it polished. He's going to make sure no dings get in there to stay. He's going to get them out immediately. He's always going to replace this, replace that, polish this, polish that, align that, fix this, fix that. Why? He loves that car and he loves working on it. And you've got the God of the universe who loves working on you. And you're going to sit up there and really think that he's just going to, mm, I'm done with you. I got bigger fish to fry. Let's see what else am I going to get now because I'm, I'm done with you. You really think God's going to? He created you. That man didn't build that car. That man bought that car. Jesus bought you with a price, bought your salvation with a price. But you were created by the God who loves you, the God who wants to work on you. And yes, again, I say, the potter wants to put you back together again. Do not give up on God. Do not give up on yourself. As Hebrew chapter 10 says, ye have need of patience. Verse 36 is what I'm reading. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Hmm. Yeah. God bless you. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't let the problems of life make you feel like God has forsaken you. Don't let the challenges of life that you may not have risen up to make you feel like you need to just walk away and forget it, just give up the ghost. No, no, you can take that test over again and over again because God is long 
own suffering. Now you need patience, even with you. God bless you.